Hello and welcome to another PyBytes video and today I want to show you how to implement an infinite scroll using FastAPI, SQL model and HTMX. So to start off this video, uh, if you're completely new to HTMX, uh, check out htmx.org. It's a great library uh, that lets you do Ajax and nice effects you would usually do with JavaScript. And you can do them directly in your HTML. So you can build very nice web interfaces without using JavaScript, which is kind of amazing. So you need to include the library and there's some simple examples here in the docs. Um, so very simple examples here where upon clicking this button, the trigger is click and it calls the clicked endpoint, which can be your Flask or Fast API uh, route or endpoint which does a bunch of things and then returns to HTML. And then you specify the div, um, the HTML div, the target where that resulting HTML is going to, um, to be located, be pasted in, so to say. And they can kind of say if that swap is the outer HTML or it replaces it or pens it or whatever. So that's a very simple example. Now it has a bunch of examples and for today, the infinite scroll um, is the one I want to show you because I did that for YouTube videos and so I can give it a channel and then it will download all the videos I mean not the physical videos but like the, the links and the, the metadata of the videos to a local database and then I implemented infinite scroll using HTMX so the README explains it pretty well, so I encourage you to go through this. Um, I have a make file, so you can just call those make commands. For example, make install to make your virtual environment and pip install the requirements. And then we have some instructions here how to get an API key from the YouTube data API, um, because you need that to um, get the data from you, YouTube. We have a bunch of environment variables. So you copy the env example to .env which will be uh, loaded in from uh, python.env. So we need the YouTube channel, the YouTube API key, and a database URL for the local caching of uh, the videos. You can of course do this without a database, but then I quickly hit the API limits. So I decided to load the data into a database and then we don't have to use the API anymore. So doing this for the PyCon channel, I got 172 videos or the metadata of the videos and you can see that in action here made some small mp4s and you can see with db browser for sqlite that the data is successfully imported then um, I have a make run that uses UVCorn to um, launch fast API. And then here we see the infinite scroll in action. I'm going pretty fast here, but every time, so I'm scrolling down on the web page, and every time it hits the bottom, it loads a bunch of more items. Um, so that's the infinite scroll, and it's a very cool pattern to use in your web apps. Uh, for testing, I will do a separate video because I have some interesting things um, to say there as well. Let's look a little bit at the code. So let's just do that here. I put it all on the uh, YouTube package and then I also use templates in the templates folder. So here we have the DB script to import the videos from YouTube. And noticeably is that the API uses pagination. So I use an infinite loop because we're not sure how many pages there are. And then we break out of that loop um, when there's not a next page token in the response. So that way I get them all and it can work with one page, 10 pages, 100 pages, depending on how much content there is on the YouTube channel. Also, this uses SQL model and I will do a separate training on that because that's a really cool library and yeah, that uh, requires a dedicated training. So that's just the helper script to get things cached. And then there are two more modules, the models and the main. So the models, I have one model, very similar to SQL Alchemy, but I'm using SQL model. 
And if you give that table equals true, then it will make an SQL Alchemy model or table in the database. And here we have the Pydentic YouTube read response we use in FastAPI. And talking about FastAPI, that's all in main. So I got two endpoints, uh, the root one that just loads up the initial videos. And then I got a videos endpoint that's triggered by HTMAX to load the additional videos upon scroll. And I'm using some Jinja templating to actually use FastAPI a bit as a web framework. So instead of JSON, I respond with a template response so this is also a nice example how you can actually use FastAPI for fully fleshed web applications. So we load the initial, let's see this in action actually. So here's the PyCon YouTube channel. And this is the initial call. There it already did the scroll. <laughs> Initially there were 10 videos retrieved through this endpoint. And once I hit the bottom of the web page, then this video endpoint was triggered with the next 10. And it will do that again, again for chunks of 10 videos every time I hit the bottom of the page. And this would normally take quite some JavaScript to do, but here it's, um, it's all HTMX in conjunction with fast API and the database, of course. So I can go all the way down as fast as I want. It doesn't crash. And here it retrieved all 172 videos, but it didn't do it in one go. It did it in chunks. And in the UV corn log, you see that these videos are retrieved 10 by 10, right? Because the offset is increasing. And those are all calls done by HTMX. So you wonder how is HTMX, how is that getting onto the page? And that's where the template comes in. So it's just a HTML page and um, we looked through the initial 10 videos, which is uh, content. Content is a bunch of table rows. And with Jinja templating, we can detect the last loop with loop.last. And um, then we can give it some extra HTML, uh, which is exactly the HTML here from the uh, documentation. So this last table row will contain the, the call to the API with a certain offset. So here it's page in our app, it's um, offset. So the offset will be increasing as more records will be loaded. And FastAPI renders the different HTML responses, right? So the TR content, that's the, the last row. That's the key element here to make this work. And that's exactly the same as the uh, documentation. So it has an HX get which we'll call fast API with increasing offsets and the limit is always 10. And the trigger is revealed, which means as we hit the bottom of the web page, this is triggered. And the resulting HTML that's returned by fast API will be after the end. So it will be appended to the existing HTML that's already on the page. So this is the first time it delivers that row. And then as we retrieve more data, through this video endpoint, we make sure that the um, TR content or that HTMX last table row um, increases the offset. So it's using the right offset when it's calling fast API. And that's it. Then it returns that extra HTML and that then gets again loaded into the template. It's a bit of figuring out, but um, I think using this repo, you can get this working for your own content pretty easily. And yeah, let me know uh, if that's the case or if you have any improvements. Happy if you make an issue or a pull request on this repo, of course. And yeah, I hope um, that gives you enough to get infinite scroll working in your web app using HTMX. Hey, it's Bob again. Hope you enjoyed that video and that you're eager to play with HTMX, fast API, SQL model. Those are great technologies. And uh, yeah, it's um, we use them a lot and it's really helpful and useful. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe below to not miss any future videos. And of course, as always, please let us know if there's anything specifically we can produce content on. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.